Good afternoon class. Right. Today we're going to cover a, a small topic on capital allowance. Discussing higher purchase as well as motor vehicles. So this area will actually be relevant to both P6 student to serve as a revision of your lower level as well as to the F6 student but only after we cover the capital allowance chapter okay all right so first we look at the rule now if let's say we acquire a non commercial motor vehicle for the use of the business you can actually qualify for CA, okay? So when you buy, but if this is a non-commercial vehicle, we will actually restrict the qualifying expenditure to a maximum of 100,000 on condition that this is a new non-commercial motor vehicle and its cost does not exceed 150,000. So if let's say you pay 120,000 to buy a car, then your qualifying plan expenditure will just be 100. Well obviously if you spend less than that, if you spend 80,000 to buy a car, then obviously the qualifying is just 80. Now so this is only on the condition that it has to be a new car and the cost does not exceed 150. So if let's say we have cases that the car is a used vehicle or if it's new but the cost exceeded 150,000 then maximum will just be 50. Right, so we're gonna show a couple of situations here, okay, using a simple example. Right, so let's just say we have X Sandra Berhard that the year end is 30th June. So what happened over here is X is actually buying a car, X is acquiring a new passenger car so it's actually or non-commercial let's say buying a passenger car for its manager in the month of June and we put June 2010 right the cause is let's say 180,000 and assuming that it has traded in its old car for 30k and then remaining is taking a higher purchase okay so it's using a higher purchase and the higher purchase will have an installment payment of let's say I'm just gonna work out a figure so let's just say is seven thousand five per month for twenty four month and the first installment will actually be in June itself. Alright Okay, so use this example. Now we're going to show you the calculations of the CA. See, first of all, because you are using hard purchase, and in hard purchase, you, you should know we are taking a loan. So if that's the case, then the installment that you're paying over here will comprise of the capital payment as well as the interest. And um, interest is actually an expense deduction while the capital will actually qualify for CA. Now, so it's very important that we got to work it out. What's the figure that we're having over here? Okay, so I'm going to start with workings. 
to show the qualifying plant expenditure incurred. Now, so if you follow YA 2010, since you quarrying in June 2010, so that's actually YA 2010, 2011, 2012. Now, the qualifying plant expenditure that you've incurred, first, you pay a 30,000 deposit. Okay, you're paying a 30,000 deposit, so that's your trading value. Right, then what we have is actually the capital repayment. So you're going to have your capital repayment. Now, how much will that capital repayment be? Now, so remember, 7,005 has comprised of the interest. So the capital repayment is quite easy to derive. You just need to know what was the loan value that you've taken. So 180,000 is my cost of the car. And if 30,000 is my trade-in, I must have taken a loan of 150. And the tenure is 24 months. So 150 divided by 24, so it's actually 6250 per month. Now effectively, we know that the interest will actually be the different, which is 1250, and that's how we derive to 7,005. So if you know that your capital repayment is 6250 per month, now how many months that you got to pay, according to your HP, you're going to pay the first installment in June. So there will actually be one month. And then you're going to get a 12 month here and 11 month over here. So you're going to have 6250. 75 and followed by 68,750. Alright, so this is the qualified expenditure that you've incurred. Now we're going to calculate the capital allowance for the car. Okay, so I'm going to work out the CA. So you got to remember that because this is hard purchase, so the claim of the CA will actually be based on the timing that you've incurred the qualifying expenditure. So the qualifying plan expenditure that you've incurred in YA 2010 and 2011. Now what QP is that? Now actually you know that the qualifying plan expenditure is 36,250. 36,250 and the qualified expenditure for 2011 is 75 but this is an example that we say the cost of the car is 180 and 180 is actually exceeding 150 that you have to restrict this to 50,000 so if that's the case the qualifying plan expenditure in this case will just be Restricted to thirteen seven five zero. All right. So what happened is in year of assessment two zero one zero, you're gonna claim an initial allowance, an annual allowance of twenty twenty. That's the rate. All right. So for the amount that you've incurred in two zero one zero, you're gonna claim. 20%, so that's 7250, 7250. So this is the amount you're going to claim. So the CA that you're going to claim will be 14,500. Right now for Y2011, now initial allowance is given just as it says, initials, initially in the first year qualified expenditure is incurred. So there will be no more initial allowance for this amount that you've incurred in 2010. So you're just going to continue claiming the AA. And then this amount incurred in 2011. Now, now we're looking at CA for 2011. So that's the first time 
you're going to claim so you will actually get initial allowance which is 2750 and in total you're going to get 12,750 and it just goes on so for YA 2012 so the annual allowance 7250 2750 and that's 10,000 and for YA 2013 you're gonna go on you're gonna claim the last amount of this figure so 2750 10,000 and Assuming you go on further, you will not be able to make further claim as you have fully claimed all the allowance for the amount that you've incurred in 2010, but you're going to claim one last time for this, and that's your allowance. So now that this vehicle will now effectively be fully claimed by end of YA2014. Alright, so class, we're going to use a different situation here. That I, I would like to show you the effects of disposal. Alright, let's just say, uh, let's just assume, I'm going to do a small change to the example. Now we say that the motor vehicle is actually disposed for 40,000. on the 17th of September 2012 okay and then the market value is actually 90 all right the market value is actually 90 all right so if we use this example to show you the effect that you're going to work out the balancing allowance balancing charge all right now we know that BABC is based on disposal value minus your RE all right so first thing is uh, on the 17th September 2012 which year of assessment is that now this would be YA2013 okay your year end is June so September is after June so it's Y2013 now you will not get allowance for that year that you dispose so you're gonna claim okay so you're just gonna claim CA till end of 2012 and then you're gonna dispose of in 2013 now so I'm going to work out the value here now what is my disposal value now we have two values over here one is the the consideration one is the market value so the law is simple you must take the higher of the two so the consideration is 40 and then the market value is 90 and you have to take the higher which is 90 now, but the adjustment that we're going to show you over here is the issues to do with this non-commercial vehicle. See, we actually restricted the qualifying plan expenditure to 50000 Now, you think logically, you buy this vehicle for 180, and the disposal value is obviously based on that 180, but the CA is calculated based on 50. So it will not be a consistent basis if you're going to take 90,000 as disposal value to minus off with RE where the qualified expenditure is based on 50. So what you have to do is you must do an adjustment to proportionate that this disposal value back to the basis of the qualifying expenditure that you've claimed. So we know that we restricted this to 50,000 out of 180. So with the adjustment we've made here, your deemed disposal value would be 
$25,000. Right, so how much is my residual expenditure? Now, we don't have to calculate. So as you say, we're going to claim CA until end of 2012. So just ignore the figure here. So I just make a simple amendment. Okay, so just imagine that we start claiming CA on this figure all the way until end of 2012. So what we're going to have is, you're going to have 7250. Okay, just take your qualifying minus all this and you're going to have 5005. That means your RE will be 12,750. So based on the figure we have above, this is our RE, 12,750. So we're going to have a balancing, oops, a balancing charge of 12,250 in year of assessment. Two zero one three. Right. So a simple rule to, to remind you that a charge must never exceed allowances that you've claimed. So if you base on these figures that we have here, allowances we've claimed will be fourteen five, twelve seven five, and ten thousand. And if you add up all these three figures, they definitely exceeded twelve thousand two five zero. So there's no problem for the charge. Okay. All right, so class, this example will illustrate and hopefully it revises for you the rule on the capital allowance when we acquire motor vehicle using hard purchase, the restriction rule when it applies only to non-commercial vehicle. And then how do you derive the qualified expenditure? How do you calculate the CA? And what do you do when you dispose them? Thank you, class. Thanks for watching.